So we're going to talk about Kiss. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why? Kiss oh. time. <laughs> we just because never people are going to. Yeah. Because the last Did time we, we talked about Kiss, we hated on the G4. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit. And also, so I, like, I, we got to got to also make sure we get the nomenclature right. So Kiss, Fettech, etc. FC, FC, Ultra, all those, all those names in. Felix, I've been working my Kiss flashcards to make sure I know who everybody okay. is. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll say it, Blunty. You said before the stream that you you didn't want people to think that we were giving the wrong impression. So this is a case where I'll say the thing that you 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 feel conservative. A lot of times it goes the other way. When the uh, when the Kiss G4 came out, one of the arguments they made was that it could run peripherals faster. And I said, and I think you agreed, who gives a crap? It's not like anything we're doing. Uh, we run D shot twelve hundred, D shot twenty four hundred. It's not like our peri our UART speed or our peripheral speed is holding us back. And I said, there's th that's a, just a marketing bullet point, and I don't think there's a compelling reason there. And I said, show me something that will take advantage of these faster peripheral speeds, and then I'll believe that there's a benefit to the G four. And I feel like maybe FetTech is doing that now. Yeah, um, it, it's just I'm just not a hundred percent clear how how well it'll be backported. So I don't want to like get too hasty about only G4, but I do think right. the G4 was the big primer for doing this change. But basically, uh, Felix with FetTech um, has created a new protocol, a new new ESC protocol. Felix uh, was originally a big part of DShot, um, and now he has released uh, a new ESC protocol that you can use on your FetTech with the new alpha that they have. Um, and this is called S2M. And S2M, the idea behind S2M, you know, currently we use PWM to communicate uh, to our uh, ESCs from the flight controller, right? So we have DSHOT and the DSHOT packets are being sent, but those are just PWM packets, like, you know, up, down, but it's all PWM still. Um, instead, um, he's created a digital signal um, that mm -hmm. actually is sending a digital throttle, um, uh, th digital throttle value over three 8-bit bytes, um, and that will have a 12-bit actual throttle resolution to the ESC, so it knows exactly what you're trying to send it. Um, and also, it's going to send it twice, so it can't get messed up. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. slick. And then, <clears throat> not only that, but he's rolled in telemetry back the other way, because it's a bidirectional protocol, so on the same line, it can send back telemetry up to eight pieces of telemetry. Currently, it's only got four, but there's room to grow there. So you no um, longer need a separate telemetry wire. Which is how Kiss yes. uh, Beal Heli has always done. Uh, well, no, that's not true. Beal Heli currently does bidirectional D shot, which carries RPM information, but nothing yeah. else. But they're implementing yeah, how, full telemetry. Yeah, how this will work is basically RPM for each of the motors, and then one telemetry will go each packet, and then they just like round robin each of the telemetry, similar to how yeah, that uh, makes sense. BLRS does it. Um, and then also, it also supports redundancy. So if you really care about that, the ESC protocol, for some reason, if, if you're worried about that, um, you can actually run now S2M and one wire at the same time. So you run two wires to your ESC from your flight controller, and you've got redundancy on all those motors. So that's kind of an interesting thing that they can hmm. do now, um, like as a fallback sort of thing. But um, yeah, I don't know. This hmm. is pretty interesting. And I think uh, it makes a lot of sense to send to turn everything digital you know there's, there's not a lot yeah. of reason to do pwm that can be interfered with you know when you can right. crc everything i mean and actually like confirm d shot is technically a digital protocol but yeah. it's using pwm signals to represent the digital ones and zeros yeah and this is digital all the way down to the sort of signaling if you will yeah is that the takeaway yeah. Yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah, instead of using PWM to get the information across, it's actually using uh, a new protocol to do the signaling instead of use DSHOT to do the signal. Uh, underscore FPV raises a good point. He says, someone should reinvent SPI by some other name and claim the new 50 megabit per second ESC speed record. Yeah, when I've heard of full digital ESCs in the past, I've heard of people doing ESCs that use I, the I squared C protocol, which is a standard high speed serial protocol that's used. For example, uh, your your gyro, I think, is typically I2C or I2C. And the other one is SPI, and that's often used on flight controllers to access the uh, the black box logging, the SD card or the flash chip. Uh, 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 why? I mean, I don't know if you know the answer, Blunty, but why not just make an I2, I2C ESC? Why, re why invent a brand new protocol? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I would guess it's because uh, there's bloat on some of those other protocols. One of the things he talks about is that the PWM has to be converted. 
Mm -hmm. uh, like, so when it gets back to the ESC, there is a delay where that conversion happens from the PWM mm -hmm. signal to the digital signal. Um, and that delay will not be there. So even though technically it runs at about a DSHOT 1200 speed with this new uh, S2M, you'll actually get faster response than even DSHOT 2400 would be because the motors, like the ESCs, can see the actual value yeah. faster. Yeah, and so, that has that has consistently been a driving uh, design goal of the at least the FedTech team, possibly also the you know uh, Alex's uh, branch, which is reducing the delay between the motors and the flight controller. That's one of the arguments why DSHOT twenty four hundred is desirable, and I've heard people say that you should use DSHOT twenty four hundred over Kiss one wire because Kiss one wire puts all of the ESC signals one after the other. Whereas DSHOT 2400 sends them in parallel and therefore there's less delay if using uh, DSHOT. Um, I think a big, I don't think anyone would argue that decreasing the delay to the motors is a good thing. I think the big question is, are we at a point of diminishing returns and uh, crossing over into marketing land? Sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that that's something we can know without logging it um, and knowing for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I remember when OneShot came out and most people watching this probably don't know what OneShot is because most people probably got into the hobby more recently than that. But we used to use PWM to drive them ESCs just like they were servos, which has horrific latency and horrific resolution and quadcopters flew like shit. And uh, they came out with OneShot, which was basically just a higher speed PWM signal. And one of the original developers of Base Flight, Time Cop, said it was a waste of time. And it was, you couldn't possibly need, uh, you know, whatever milliseconds latency because the human brain can't respond that fast. The same argument we hear today when arguing about camera latency and receiver latency, it's the same damn argument. And in that case, he was clearly wrong. But there is a point where you reach diminishing returns and you don't see a benefit. And I think it's hard to know where that is until you've past it and then gone, oh, this was a waste of time. Yeah, I 100% I agree. Um, we don't have it on the roundup or on the news, but um, one thing uh, we talked about a little bit before this uh, is that uh, UAV Tech did a series uh, recently on PID loop rate and then was testing PID loop rates because he's talked for a while about how it probably doesn't matter, but we should test it. You know, obviously he wants to test everything. Um, and I was the same idea. You know, if you draw more points on a line, at some point you're not getting a more the line's the same shape, right? Right. Um, and so his testing on 2K, 4K, and 8K, at the same, you know, uh, logging rates and different logging rates and stuff, he did multiple tests, and all of them showed that at 8K, he had less pit error than at 4K and less pit error than at 2K. And I thought that was pretty surprising. And uh, yeah, I don't know. So I would like to see more testing of this, of this realm, less yeah. latency to the ESCs and stuff. I want to see on the chart it not matter. You know what I mean? That's, that's what oh, I'd yeah. like to see. Yeah, whether it matters or not, we need data. We need data. Yes. I mean, I do think uh, Mad Max FPV says all latency is worth chasing. I, I disagree. Like, uh, if you go from 25 milliseconds down to 15 milliseconds, that matters. If you go from 15 to 8, that matters. But if you go from 2 to 1, despite the fact that you've cut the latency in half, I'm skeptical that it matters. And if you go from 1 to 0 0.1, I really don't think it matters. There is a point where you're, you've reached the point of diminishing returns and you're no longer getting gains. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and like we've talked about before, likely with control link and video and stuff, it will vary across the spectrum of pilots too. For sure. So, yeah, the big, yeah. The big uh, argument here with the motor protocol latency is that the props can only change speed so fast due to the fact that they have mass and mass has inertia. And I forget the number, but I remember when we started getting RPM feedback from the motors via bi-directional D-Shot, guys like UAV Tech and Ryan Harrell uh, looked at black box logs to see how fast the motors were changing speed. And the number I remember was like eight milliseconds that the motors approximately, there was like, it's like having a low pass filter at a certain, at an eight millisecond delay. And it, it suggested that having protocols that ran faster than that was didn't have a point but people have been saying that for a long time and been proven wrong so it'll be very interesting to see how this new protocol from fettech pans out sure. will they be sharing it with the world like they did with d shot uh i don't know hmm. i do not know okay
I mean, if it only exists in a FetTech flight controller and nowhere else, it'll be hard to A-B test it. True. All yeah. right. And then one thing I wanted to mention real quick while we're here is just that mm -hmm. uh, in that imager link, uh, they did say that they are going to backport as much as they can to F7, and then they are going to keep supporting the KISS side as well. So it looks like they're going to be doing like a FetTech KISS branch sort of thing. And then FetTech GUI will be how you can figure the FetTech side like we've talked about before, like we've always wanted. You know, if you're going to do the FetTech thing, just do it and give us all mm -hmm. the configuration, which I, yeah. I'm happy with. Uh, yeah. So I think everybody's still getting supported there, but there will be kind of like a branching thing going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's the big question that I will be interested to see. If this new high-speed protocol only runs on the G4 processor, then that will be the thing I was asking for when I said, if you're going to sell me the G4 and act like it's got a benefit, show me something that only it can do, and then I'll believe yeah. you. But FedTech really can't win this one with me. Sorry, FedTech. Either you backport this new protocol to the F7 processors, and I go, see, there was no point to the G4. Or it only exists on the G4, and I go, yeah, well, why can't I have it on an F7? And whine. <laughs> but Innovation. Anyway. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> you can't win. I'm going to whine, no matter what you do. Don't, don't try to please me. I'm, you, <laughs> I will just whine about something else. That's the takeaway here. All right. Yeah.